What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. First and foremost, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Still, they're not. And also, people are getting, people are getting sick out there. I man. know. Uh, Y'all are not doing it. <laughs> I was getting ready to tell my wife, hey, it's about time to let it go. We're in a new season. We got to, we got to. Launched the new season, as Kitten says. Right. Then my entire family got sick. <laughs> I have no legs to stand on. They not follow the directions. I was just talking about in another video that I know that people are out here like, oh my God, you're still staying safe and sanitized in 2023. Yes, because y'all aren't doing it. I you're just, not doing it. I just left a place where the lady's got like the uh, sick voice. Yeah. Like, She's telling her coworker how I just lost my voice over the weekend. Then her coworker goes, "Yeah, me too." And they're both nah, nah, nah. I'm like, "Bro, you're sick. You're sick. Go home. Go home. You fall asleep at the cash register, Sue." There was like this really nice period where, like, when people were sick, they would stay home. Yeah. And people have just stopped doing that. And I understand. Okay, look, I get it mm -hmm. that like our jobs are no longer required to let us stay home right. when we're sick mm -hmm. but uh, i uh if you are out by choice go home why are you grocery shopping and <laughs> all over the produce go home the worst part is when you go to the grocery store and you know people are sick there at the grocery store <laughs> makes so me so mad i know i i know and you just like do i put all my groceries back how do why? i deal with this why are what you at Korean barbecue? Bro, what are you doing? Reaching into the community meat. <laughs> like why? Oh. Why are you doing this? So anyways, we're here for casual shit. <laughs> the one rule of nature, school never taught you. And if you know it's casual geographic, probably something violent and cruel. Um, my school taught me that all of nature's hierarchies were due to God's will. So, so Jesus did it. So humans yeah. are at the top right. because that's how God wanted it to be. Right. You know? And you know, <laughs> poor people are at the bottom because <laughs> that's how God wanted it to be. Yeah. <laughs> I want you down by my feet. You know, <laughs> Anyways, super excited to get into this casual geographic. Very thankful to my husband for joining me. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hello. My favorite Hello. clip. <laughs> Let me in. She wants to come in. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Did he just You have been consistently lied to your entire life and the biggest source of some of the most unprovoked lies my parents. is school. School. School really oh. told us that. And for you, <laughs> it's the same thing actually. Yeah. My parents were my school. Yeah. So sad. This dude in 92 discovered America, that quicksand and giant Venus flytraps were way more of an issue than they ended up being. Right. That writing in cursive was the only way you'd ever be taken seriously. Facts. And my personal favorite, whenever a teacher would say, this won't slide in college. Whole time your calculus professor at 5 p.m. can end up your beer pong partner <laughs> by 11. <laughs> but there's one mistruth that insists on being spread. And before we get to that, story time. So back Sorry. in the okay. 70s, ornithologists noticed something pretty disturbing, even for them. Ornithologists are people who study birds, in case you didn't know. I thought they studied orgies. <sighs> it's Latin for my penis. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you had more to say. I was just waiting for you to say it. Fola is a remote island over 200 miles off Scotland, and for generations, migratory birds, specifically Arctic terns and one of the ops of Happy Feet, the skua, use it as nesting grounds to raise their chicks. Not and a cute. group of ornithologists noticed a gruesome trend of chicks with pretty graphic injuries. No. Some chicks looked like they had a leg or two ripped off. For others, the same, but with their wings. Some chicks even had their heads divorced from their body, for sure irreconcilable. And while some of the chicks somehow survived being mutilated, scientists had no idea what was causing this sudden rise in amputation. Interesting. At first, they guessed otters or even hedgehogs, but it turned out to be neither. You want to know what it was? Their mom. I promise you, you'll never guess it. I'll even give you a chance to try. Comment what you think. I bet you're wrong. Ants. The answer? Sheep. What? Yeah. <laughs> Scientists observed grazing sheep stumble across a defenseless chicken without a second thought or really even much of a prequel, grab them and eat them. Sometimes the sheep Get would snap the fuck off a leg from a drumstick, 
Other times they might grab one by the head and initiate a permanent separation. Swallow and Skull and All hold. From 1973 to 1980, nearly 700 baby birds have been victimized by the business end of a carnivorous Q-tip. In the grand scheme of things, that's only a debt in the thousands of thousands of birds born in that time. Then again, nobody expected sheep to be involved in foul play. And that goes back to those lies I told you about. You really are gonna drop some of the most traumatizing information I've ever heard and then follow it up with a dad joke? <laughs> that's the kind of time that you're on today? That's what we're doing today? I love dad jokes, but I, I, I can't fully appreciate this one because, <laughs> because it's about baby birds being mutilated. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna let that fly. You're telling me the- My love. You're telling me the pecking order between sheep and birds <laughs> goes hoof first, then feather? Ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. You gotta let me get there, man. I'm trying to go dad joke for dad joke with my friend. She is not over there. Hello? Don't, no, don't, no, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> you gotta let me get there. <laughs> Trying to have fun with my friend. So in science class, we were taught this rule. Herbivores eat plants, right. carnivores eat meat, right. and those with culinary commitment issues are called omnivores. Culinary commitment issues. <laughs> Garbage. That's what he means. <laughs> Garbage. And for a lot of us, that's where it ended. But of course, nature's more complicated than that. It's like a spectrum, and on one end you have obligate herbivores, mm -hmm. as in they're obligated to eat just plants or starve to death. Mm -hmm. Here you got animals like koalas, sloths, and a dead-eyed plush toy, the bear Cuscus. -cus. Yep. Then you have the same concept, but obligate carnivores, like cats, of every kind. Yeah. That includes your house cat. Yeah. Stop feeding your house cat vegan food, vegetarian food. Oh, yeah. Don't be... Feed your cat meat. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people show those videos of them like force feeding their cats lettuce. Stop it! Your cat would eat your face if given the chance. <laughs> and I realize now after hearing you say that, that's why those clips are so popular. Yeah. Because people were making them be vegetarians. Yeah. And people being like, it doesn't matter if you think it loves you, it will eat your face. And smack in the middle are your omnivores. But there's also facultatives, and basically that means most of the time you'll find them at one end, but every once in a while they'll borrow a meal plan from the other side. Mm -hmm. Nice. are hyper carnivores, with most of their calories coming go, from seals. Go, go, go. But rarely they'll switch it up to berries, seaweed, moss, and even straight up grass, mm. which makes them facultative carnivores and not an obligate like a lion. And since right. we're already on bears, pandas are a good example of facultative herbivores. Mm -hmm. Right. I promise it's gonna get less complicated, but the yin yang yogi's defining fine. personality trait is being a bamboo merchant. But every once in a while, they surprise us. Like when this panda was caught in 4K eating a past tense wildebeest, or when the DreamWorks jockey chased, caught, murked, and ate a peacock. <gasps> They've also been known to hunt pikas. That's a pika. So oh. even though most of what goes down as gullet is bamboo, protein in the form of meat is never what really is off that? the table. Which makes <laughs> right. them herbivores. And they're not the only ones. Almost the opposite. Almost every herbivore you can think of is actually facultative. Okay. Even the ones you wouldn't expect. That's how the Good Vibes vegan aqua blimp has also been known to snag fish from nets for themselves. They nice. have the normally vegetarian shell jockey the tortoise, mm. turning a rabbit carcass into a cookout. Bro, could you imagine getting slow roasted by fucking turtles? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not a flash fry. They're taking their goddamn time. <laughs> they be like, bro, don't flip my meat and don't squish it. I want to pull it straight from the bone. Stop talking about me squishing food. So a lot of subliminals in that. That was a heavy statement. I made a lot of. Uh, yeah. I made a lot of statements. They've also been known to plot on and consume unlucky birds. To be Damn. fair, if you can literally fly but get taken off a sentence by a mobile boulder, that's Damn. more about you Damn. than him. There was even that time in 25,000 flesh-eating turtles to deal with the whole corpse population problem in the Ganges. It, it didn't work, by the way. But by far, the biggest culprit of covert carnivory are deer. The huh. same deer that's usually the poster boy for the middle child of the food chain will occasionally get calories oh, from something like the past 10 Oh my months. god! A couple years ago, researchers wanted to see just what happens to the human body after the soul evacuates, and basically set up these body farms to see how they decompose. Right. As you can probably guess, photos would go viral featuring deer chewing on human bones. Damn! That is sick. through the man-made remains like vultures. 
In 2015, researchers in North Dakota set up nest cams for a 24 hour live stream of the hatchlings. And not only did the footage catch deer enjoying an extremely late term omelet, the servants actually outdid the foxes and weasels in that area, i.e. the ones you'd expect that from. And it wasn't just them being opportunity oh merchants, some of those deer went out of their way to get to them. And in Canada, scientists were looking to study different species of birds and so trapped them using mist nets. Only for the unhinged ruminants to stroll in and eat the trapped and struggling birds alive, oh right out of the nets. Growing up is realizing Bambi would have 100% turned on Thumper if times got tough. It's now believed that a nutrient deficiency and a food shortage is really all it takes for an animal to go from herbivore to fern gore. Because one thing about animals, they don't care. A deer not finna pass down a chance for easy protein. Is he eating a snake? It's a snake. Twist is, almost every herbivore on earth is facultative, meaning they'll take a page out of a predator's playbook if circumstances call for it. Okay. That's how you get normally docile horses. No! Oh like my god, chicken. I've seen that. Or that time cows in Australia. Eat baby chicken? Oh, yeah, I've seen that though. I've seen that. Like, they eat it on purpose? Like, a male horse, when agitated during heat, will do just about anything, but yes. They also kick them to death for no reason, by the way. Because, like, you know, chickens travel, like, when they're free range. Right. And they, they wander into, like, the, sometimes they will just walk up and just kick a fucking chicken. So all you horse girls Bee. out there were like, oh my Bee. god, horses are such wrinkled, beautiful animals. That's the kind of animal you're supporting. And then it'll walk up to you and be like, where's my bread? That's the kind. You're <laughs> like, oh, feed us some sugar cubes. Did those teeth? Those teeth murder. So you think those sugar teeth cube, kill. You think sugar cube. I think the outdated pastries from the corner store. And they used to have those like frosted like uh, pies. Yeah. And, and those kind of, like those old kind of desserts. Right. And when they expire, they hand them out in bags to farmers and you feed them to your horses and cows as treats. I didn't know you could do that. Well, according to this video, it's the appropriate place. They eat anything. Right. Processed. They don't give a shit. I, I don't know. I just never considered that. So I could technically feed my horse like Cheez-Its? Horses love chips. Huh. But salt, I mean, like in general, they go nuts over salt. Really? Yeah, like they like sweet stuff. They love salty stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. So I could feed my horse like sushi? Probably, but they can't really chew sticky stuff. So you don't want to get too sticky. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. don't want to go too sticky. You know, they have molars, so. Yeah. But then you have to brush their teeth if you give them like too many things. They Got it. brush the teeth. And okay. Now it's a whole thing. Not every horse, like it's face touched and it's a big drama. Right. Okay, well. Mm hmm. Point is, horse girls, you support demonic animals. All right. There then. we go. That's how you get normally docile horses yeah. treating baby birds like popcorn chicken. Or that time cows in Australia were caught slurping pythons That's like fruit rollers. nuts. All because they were apparently feeding for phosphorus. Even giraffes. Yeah, they're not safe either. <laughs> the verticality merchants of the motherland will often what eat up the bones of other animals. What is not that? Not really swallowing them, but more like licking and sucking on it. Pause. So their saliva can leach off nutrients like calcium and phosphorus. Makes sense. There's no pause leader. He just like that. Cosplaying antelopes, snatching up birds to feed on their misfortune. Damn. So wow. Far, we've learned three things. One, most herbivores are about as vegetarian as their options. Two, baby birds are really the Kit Kat bars of nature. And three, now you see why Marty did everything in his power to get up out of there. His entire friend group would have had his hide if it got to that point. <laughs> Which of course brings us to hippos. And this is where things get- Oh, I believe that. Complicated. At this point, it probably surprises exactly none of you that the four-legged assassination cetacean can have a hankering for flesh. Hippos have been seen eating carcasses, and even resorting to cannibalism. Oh, he eating the shit out of that. Because for a while, we thought it was the same deal as before, just animals switching it up when their primary food source is compromised, mm -hmm. which would make hippos facultative herbivores, as mm -hmm. that word again. Except more and more scientists are coming to the conclusion that hippos eating meat aren't just scavenging or being opportunists, it's just hippos hippoing. <laughs> right. Hippos will put themselves in a position to catch a body and subsequently feed on it. There have been reports of hippos murking livestock and seemingly predatory assaults. And some even believe hippos will purposely park themselves in a river migrating animals have no choice but to cross just so they can turn the casualties into calories. Damn. Sometimes that involves punking crocodiles out of food. And of course, you already know, hippos are not above feeding off friendly fire. Mm. All this means hippos might not even be herbivores at all, but identify closer to the omnivore side of the spectrum. You got them just like Tom taking a leg. Now, you're probably asking, what's the difference between a facultative herbivore and a straight up omnivore? And right. there's an answer, I, I just really couldn't tell you. Like, you <laughs> could say facultatives eat mostly plants, but can resort to no, meat as a no. fallback, where omnivores can normally go either way, but oh, I'd be lying chilling. if I said I didn't just make that up on the spot. The moral of the story, it's way more complex than just putting labels on things and calling it a day. Wow. For example, this. 
That is a common diker, and it's an antelope less than two feet tall That's found cute. in sub-Saharan Africa. Adorable. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure okay, it's the only cute. antelope that regularly eats meat. I was wrong. Along with the shrubs and grasses you'd expect, the meal plan for this antelope undertaker often involves combing through corpses, along with lizards, frogs, small rodents, and, you guessed it, baby birds. <laughs> a good percentage of their diet requires other animals to diet with the tea silent. I'd call the diker an omnivore. Mm. But then, you got this. The tree-loving, pretty privileged acorn hoarders of the rodent world. Right. Many will tell you that with a grocery list of mostly plants, fruits, nuts, and seeds, the squirrel is mostly herbivorous. But squirrels are also infamous for raiding birds' nests and turning creamy poultry. <laughs> <into birds. laughs> the birds! The birds are at the bottom of every list! What is happening? The birds are bottom of every list, dude. I didn't know! I didn't know birds had so many freaking bro, predators, bird, bro. Everyone, that's why the wings are for, bro. Bird, the ops are everyone. What is happening? I just, I just, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> how many things eat birds? Like some things, like the deer, that fucked me up a little bit. Yeah. Right. This is a little unusual for me, but I kind of get it. Right. Because when you're around animals, you kind of understand. Like, well, like how I was around animals. Right. Some people are on animals like petting zoos, mm -hmm. you know, where mm -hmm. you are telling the animal what it's going to do yeah. and you train it to do what's available and they get used to doing what's easy. Yeah. But when you're around like free roaming animals, you see them just do shit. Yeah. Like when I'm not around, I think I'm not looking, they're doing some wild stuff like eating cans, which you don't understand. There's food available in front of it. It will beeline to that can and consume the entire thing. <laughs> It's not like a dog, you say, drop it. It just right. eats it. Just it just keeps eating And you go, do we call the vets? Like, what do we do with this information? Right. Right? So, that, you know, you see stuff happen. You see them fight each other, go out of their way, like run across the field to whoop on another animal. Mm -hmm. Like, what is happening to them? Yeah. Animals really just don't give a fuck. They, like, people, I feel like people try to humanize animals. Right. Wild animals, especially, way too much mm -hmm. they don't give a fuck they don't. animals don't have a sense of like morality like that's <laughs> that's not that's uh, not how animals work hell no you know and so anyway yeah this is very shock it's shocking not surprising yes do this a lot on occasion, you'll see squirrels pack up chickens. <laughs> That's a whole lot. Like, we want the cook version too. Russian squirrels ganging up on a stray dog and eviscerating the canine alive. Get out of here. off with their share of flesh. Yeah, not so cute now. They're not the only rodents that go rogue either. Normally, grass-eating prairie dogs have been known to savage baby ground squirrels. God, the dog. Eat the remains. In case you're curious, they do this by shaking the baby violently until their existence. <laughs> Shaking baby syndrome. <laughs> Prairie dogs know about shaking baby syndrome, bro. Oh my god. You give a rodent thumbs and it just goes, shake it. <laughs> That's cold. That's messed Go up. Go for it, man. It's not even my worst rodent fact in the chamber. Okay. In 1995, a 43 year old woman was found deceased in her flat. And with facial lesions and lacerations, and the fact that she was naked from the waist down, first responders thought it was a special victims unit kind of crime. Mm -hmm. Except it was later determined that she had expired to pneumonia. The desecration of her corpse was caused by Whoa. her pet golden hamster. Whoa. Not only did the pet feed on her vacated vessel, law enforcement would find the hamster's makeshift burrow containing human skin, flesh, and muscle tissue. But that shouldn't even really be a surprise since hamsters are known cannibals, but what you might not know is that sometimes it can be caused by corn. Researchers at the University of Strasbourg found this out by accident when they tried to figure out why the female hamsters under their care kept domering their own children. Mm. Through some likely traumatizing trial and error, they figured out that just a corn diet was even the hamsters missing vital crucial, crucial vitamins, specifically B3. They figured that out because once they added B3 back into their diets, the mother hamsters suddenly remembered how to mother. And the Damn. crazy part is, that can happen to people. Vitamin B3 deficiency can lead to pellagra, a disease associated with diarrhea, dermatitis, mm -hmm. dementia, and eventually dying. So in a weird twist, an unbalanced diet can really lead to spawn-wrecking rodents, and they're not the only known cannibals in nature. Damn. Chimpanzees are a great example. Yeah, yeah. that's a good Animals example. don't care. For Chips real. have been known to de-life their rivals and devour the body. Mm -hmm. Now to us, it's horrific and it makes chimps the spawn of Satan. To a chimp with no legal system or a sense of morality, we did that. Live, what do you mean? That's sense. what people Burning used to do. To protect your food supply and not letting easy protein go to waste. And before you judge, early humans reportedly made the brains of terminated children a somewhat regular 
popular part of hip-hop. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like, people forget chimps aren't just violent pseudo-vegans. They're legit predators. Mm -hmm. As in, they'll work together in coordinated attacks on prey like colobus monkeys. Which, you know, isn't all that different Who from being disemboweled by a pack of Olympic-level parkour zombies. Oh, also been known super to hunt casual. Babies. That's a bush baby. By using spears. But with all the chimp carnage on this channel, them having carnivore tendencies should really be no surprise. Right. The plot twist is, even the pacifists of the Tell great apes story. could be on predatory <laughs> timing. Most people, including me about two weeks ago, see orangutans as a good vibes hippie vegetarians of the primate world. Yeah. Right. Which is almost true, ginger apes eat mostly the stuff you'd expect, you know, fruits, figs, leaves, maybe some termites to go with bird eggs. Right. But then you got this, an orangutan tearing apart a slow loris. <gasps> the same one known for being a Orangs figured out how to neutralize by using the loris's natural weakness. Blunt force trauma in the form of a bite <laughs> with a skull. Now, to be fair, a meat-eating man of the force is remarkably rare. Then again, chances are, before this video, a good number of y'all probably thought orangutans were only a threat to pieces of fruit. The same way a lot of people feel about toucans. That was a woodpecker, which is actually what toucans are, the more you know, has also been known to put bats on permanent what leave for life. What the? Really? Those commercials ain't show you. The At least the birds are getting their get back, though. That's, but it's another winged, it's a winged rat though. Yeah. Okay, all right, accept yeah. it. I will allow it. Like yeah, that's the part Fruit Loops commercials ain't show you. They're also one of the many animals on the list of population control for baby birds. He ate the hell out of it. That was a mammal thing. Well, two can play that game. Yo, who wrote this? I, I, two I, I can. Wrote, I'm sorry. But birds in general will <laughs> eat virtually anything that doesn't pack them up in the process. Seagulls have been seen scarfing down squirrels with the <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's at least one person in the world down a dog thanks to this flying antichrist. But the biggest example of feathery fury is what oh happens on Malthus Island. This is where we go full circle. Fuck. This island off the coast of South Africa is a nursery for the thousands of Cape Gannets nesting here. Mm. Which would probably be a good idea. That's gross. If someone ain't snitched to the pelicans, mm. because a population of white pelicans started traveling to Malgus, just so they can swallow Gannett's <laughs> hole, often right in front of their parents. And if one was unlucky enough to have both parents out at sea, that's just an easy lick for this attack on Titan Pterosaur. It gets worse when you realize the half-digested, fully molested baby birds often end up being regurgitated for the pelican progeny to eat. And you thought they just ate fish. Predators come in many forms, I've and seen one island birds, in the Pacific yeah. is home to one of the most unlikely. Because if you bleed on the wrong island, you can attract a pack of coconut crabs. <laughs> there is a satanic manifestation in the form of crustacean attracted to blood. They're more than enthusiastic scavengers. I didn't know they were attracted to blood. Like Mararu Island, it took the homicidal hermit crabs a week to completely undress a pig carcass down to the bone. Ooh. Damn! So a pincher strong enough to humble a coconut, the killer crabs are more than capable of catching their own prey. Right. Especially when they can climb trees and ambush sleeping birds. Mm. This video was taken Damn. from a crab after it Again. snapped the hollow bones of a seabird. What you crazy. don't see is where a group of crabs arrived at the injured and incapacitated avian and proceeded to tear the bird apart. They've nice. also been known to make a meal out of rats, cats, and maybe even humans. Because the crabs. Bruce Lee on the yeah, crabs of delicious. Amelia Earhart was that a cluster of crabs got to her before anyone else could. And the worst part, there's no guarantee she was relieved from life by the time they got to her. Because Damn. even though Mr. Krabs on creatine normally goes for fruit, just like most animals on Earth, they're only as vegetarian as their options. Hmm. Hug your loved ones, stay safe out there, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Wow, dude, that was so good. And it it is one of these things where you have to live a life and go, I'm really upset that they lied to us for no reason. Right. Because I didn't have to be traumatized by this. Yeah. I could have learned this how many years <laughs> when I was born. You could have just yeah. started telling me. Yeah. Things eat things. It's natural. We could tell the truth about the animal kingdom, but I think it, it's so not to us but for like older people it was so important to present like this sanitized view of like history and science they really wanted to make things like easy to digest and then they were like we'll get to the real the real shit later but then for some people they they never learn never they never learned the real shit now you're 45 years old and you didn't know that Co Christopher Columbus wasn't the first person to he never even made it here it's crazy because people make, make their whole lives living regular lives then apply to work at a school board and then just work for schools with the same knowledge when does next come yeah when am i going to just read a boring history book about these things and and you know some people don't have an interest in learning more. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Like, I am somebody who always wants to know more yeah. about the things that I'm interested in, right? Like, there's some things I don't need to know more about, I don't give a fuck about. But some people are like that about everything. Right. You know? Yeah. They learned what they learned in school, and they don't care to learn anymore, which is fine until they start impacting policies about education. We call that uh, the people who work at Riot. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned enough to push the buttons in this game. Now I will apply to work for the company. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us for this video. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm sure that some of you guys are out there not nearly as horrified as we were. Some of you guys out there knew all this shit and just let us live in blissful ignorance and we appreciate it. But did you know you. how many of them ate specifically birds? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know it was an honest action. Like, because I knew some of these things ate other things right. occasionally, but I did not know there was like 80% birds. It's mostly birds. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Thank uh, you for joining me. I'm just here to be attractive. You are attractive. Thank you. You're so handsome. And thank you. Peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's, it's getting, getting hot in here. <laughs> All right.